Welcome back to the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex, your host. Today's date is Sunday, December 11, 2022. Bringing you another 30-minute consult of sorts. I could squeeze this one in, and it should be pretty, uh, I'm not going to say straightforward, but they're asking a particular, very peculiar question. This is from r slash career guidance. These Reddit questions provide a lot of good material. Sometimes they don't provide the best context. But to the question and uh, the body seems to give a little bit more information. So let's dive in. It's the first week at my new job and already being ostracized. Should I quit now? Now, for those who don't know what ostracize means, it's to exclude someone from uh, like a group or from society even, from civilization. So they're being ostracized on their first week. They're being excluded for some reason. And I mean, you've got to ask, well, what are they doing wrong? How are they fucking up? It could just be them as a person, right? But we don't know who they, who they are as a person. We would find out on a one-to-one consult if they need it. And it's suggested as a career, as a career consultant, as a professional consultant, I would recommend visiting us one-to-one, sending us a message, a DM, even on Instagram. It's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. You know, you can also send us some snail mail. That's P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. The body says, I started a new job and my supervisor doesn't hide their disdain for me. Meaning the supervisor doesn't hide their ill feelings, their ill will towards them. I really don't know what I could have said or done since I haven't been here a week. It's a very small team and they invite everyone to lunch and breaks except me. Fam, I guess you just have to take your own breaks. You have to have to take your own lunches by yourself until you're part of the in group. Um, Now, as far as the manager hiding their disdain, I'd like to know a little bit more about that, how you know. It is disdain. Disdain is gonna be like a, like a disappointment, like a, like a apprehension, like um, repulsive. Like maybe they're repulsed somehow by this new employee that causes them disdain towards them. That that's like an active, like an, that that's an active feeling, a feeling of disdain. It's, uh, they say here, it's a very small team. They invite everybody to lunch and breaks except me. I tried my best talking to everyone and sort of tagged along with them to lunch, but they really seem to avoid me. I mean, you're brand spanking new, dude. I mean, they're, they're already bonded together, essentially. And if you tag along, I just keep my mouth shut in the beginning, right? Until either until you get included or until you have something worthwhile to contribute. I don't know what the dynamic is. Maybe you do have something worthwhile to contribute just off rip, but they're swatting you down. They're knocking you down a peg like you're you are an outsider. Essentially, this is a brand new territory that you are infiltrating for lack of a better word. So until you know how how the pieces move until until I know how the pieces move, I'm keeping my mouth shut and just observing. That's it. <laughs> That's that corporate cowboy shit, right? Keeping my mouth shut, just observing until I can until I can do it moving. They say here the supervisor. Uh, they always seem to avoid me. The supervisor always act irritated when I ask questions about work. At my second day. All right. Okay. 
Uh, first few days in, they even proudly told me how they outcasted a person they didn't like until the person quit. All right, I mean, those those are like subtle red flags. Uh, I was given, I mean, because that's, that's office politics. That's corporate culture um, at, at this point. Sometimes a supervisor can act irritated, but as long as they help you, you keep asking the questions. You keep asking about policies and procedures. If, if they don't come to you, if they don't come to you with, with a manual, with a policy manual, an employee's manual, something for you to follow, how, where are you going to get the procedures from? Where are you going to get the policies from? From your supervisor. So they could act irritated all they want. At the end of the day, they're still going to have to orient you to the company. All right, they said uh, first few days in, but but I was given I was given a big project by the director, and I asked help from my supervisor, but they are indirectly refusing, in indirectly refusing, and purpose indirectly refusing, and purposefully offering help to other people within my earshot. I haven't even been here a week. And I'm already dreading going to work. Do I quit now? <laughs> uh, indirectly refusing? How? Like how exactly? Maybe if they offered you, if hmm, if they hired you for a specific job, a technical job, a job that you interviewed for, a job that you might have claimed you had experience in um, something along the lines of what the director has assigned to you. I would question, I would question all the questions coming from you. If you have the experience in the background. Now, if, if you need additional information or data, some type of, uh, uh, chain of custody, like some type of, I don't know, documentation that requires a chain of custody with your supervisor, then that's fine because you obviously have to go to them for certain authorizations, certain permissions in order to carry out the project. That's not the, the fact that they don't <clears throat> the fact they don't want to do your job for you doesn't mean they are refusing to help you. That might be what you mean. That might be what you mean by indirectly refusing, maybe because they're not directly helping, right? <laughs> but uh, again, that depends on our definition of direct and indirect. And that all depends on context. You see, if I had this person in front of me, I would go through, I would create a list of questions and go through it with them so that I'm able to get the feedback I need so I could then follow up with better questions and get better context on their situation. So I, so my, so the consult is worthwhile. So, so the consult has, uh, so the consult is contextualized and tailored is personalized for your circumstances. Um, not th that doesn't mean that they are actively refusing to help you. If, if anything, it may be, it may be that because the director assigned it to you directly, the director assigned it to you, you're required to work with the director. And it's out of the supervisor's depth. Maybe they don't know exactly what you're working on. So they give you either a vague or a generalized answer on how to approach the work, but not exactly how to do it. That type of instruction might need to come from the director, not the supervisor. So you may want to follow up with the director. As far as the uh, as far as the corporate culture, as far as like the um, the I don't know if I want to say clickiness. As far as the groups and you trying to be a part of the group, 
I wouldn't worry about it the first week. I would not worry about it the first week about going to breaks and going to lunch with the other, with the other teams. It's a small, you're saying it's a small organization, but even then you're still barely trying to be onboarded. Maybe ask questions about the work. I, again, I don't know what type of person you are, how personable, how social you are, uh, what type of conversation you keep. I don't, I don't know any of that, but I would venture to, I would venture to find out. I'm not going to venture to guess, but I would explore and I would inquire. I would ask those questions that would help me inform my professional opinion. Um, yeah, focus on, focus on onboarding with the company, focus on getting your position with the company, right? And it sounds like they trust you enough with the large project, specifically the director trusts you, right? Which I'd rather have a director trust me than my immediate supervisor. My immediate supervisor is just there to, to, to manage my productivity, I hope, not to micromanage the project I'm working on. So you asking for the supervisors, you asking for the supervisor's involvement is like, Asking them to crawl up your ass and micromanage what you do at every step, at every phase of the project. Again, I'm, I'm just going off of the context that I was given, which is not much. So if it sounds a little extreme, if it sounds a little brutal, if it sounds a little crude, that's why. Definitely follow up with the director. And keep the supervisor in the periphery, if anything. How about this? If they don't want to include you at lunch and at break, cozy up to the cozy up to the director. Ask them questions about the company, about the procedures and the policies. Those questions that you had for your supervisor, hell, the director could refer those questions to your supervisor. Obviously, don't sound ignorant. Don't sound uneducated. Don't sound like you don't know what you are doing at the company. But you want to make it seem like the company is a special place to be. And the company might have special policies and procedures to follow for certain, for certain tasks. So you definitely want to pay respect to those and recognize those in front of the director. It's not so much stroking their ego as it is letting you know how the company operates. That is some corporate cowboy shit. And you see how you can accomplish both things by asking the right questions, asking the right people. It doesn't have to be your immediate coworkers. It doesn't have to be your immediate supervisor. It could be the director who oversees almost everything. Let's take a look at some of these comments real quick. There are a bunch of comments and I'll go with the first one. It says here, go to the director and ask for insight into the team dynamics. Share your observation that there seems to be some resentment about you being on the team and you and you, to the best of your knowledge, haven't been there long enough to have put your foot in it. So you'd appreciate some tips regarding integrating into the team. I'd be confident that you've been hired over someone the team wanted. So this can be nipped in the bud and feelings expressed to the person responsible, the director, for their issues. However, it also seems possible that you have walked into a veritable viper's nest. So preparing an exit strategy may be wise. Dog, you got to have an extra strategy regardless. Anytime you go into a place, never stop interviewing. Always keep moving. Even if you slow down on the application and the interviewing while you orient yourself into a company, you have to keep it moving. In today's day and age, don't expect to last, to, don't expect to last more than five years. Don't expect it. I wouldn't plan it. 
If somebody asks you where you see yourself in five years, tell them in a better position. That's it. Point blank. I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to elaborate. You can just tell them in a better position, making more money, handling more business, working with more people, seeing more clients, being more productive. You know, that that's that's about all you have to say without having to elaborate, without telling them, well, I'll maybe not, I, I don't see myself at this company anymore in five years. And because they're going to start to ask why, why you aren't committed. You're committed while you're there. You're committed while you're there. Why? Because you're committed to the work. You're committed to your professional image and developing yourself. But that's all they should know. That's all they should know is that you're committed to being better. Um, my apologies if I got a little carried away. I know I'm speaking a little loud, but it is what it is. And it's true. Uh, yeah, I, this, this is a really good suggestion to go to the director. As far as uh, their hiring practices, I mean, I... I would probably just bring up the fact that um, maybe that there appears to be some resentment, but it could just be you. It could just be you. Like the fact that your supervisor has a disdain for you, you, you ought to be worried whether or not the supervisor and the director have some type of uh, cogent relationship, working relationship, because if they don't, then you might be getting the brunt of it. Because you got to sign a project. I mean, it's it's your first week there and you got to sign a project by a director. I don't know. To some, that might be a red flag. But if the director uh, tasks you on a large project and the supervisor doesn't want to help, I mean, maybe we're missing some additional context here. Maybe it's something you want to bring up with the director. Maybe it's something you can bring up with the supervisor, but I don't know exactly what words to use because I don't have all of the facts. I don't have a very clear picture of what's going on. I just have what the OP gave us. I just have what this original poster gave us, and it's not much to go on. Another comment here says, Keep looking for other work. Yeah, always. While you're earning an income from this job. Yes, that's good advice. Talk to your supervisor's supervisor, which would be the director, and get everything in writing. Document as much as you can. Don't waste your energy trying to make friends. Just be polite to colleagues. Do the minimum to keep this job until you get your next offer. Then bail. Unless talking with the director makes a difference and you decide it's worth staying. Always be looking for your next job though. Yeah, that's, that's very succinctly put. That's probably what I would do. But that's standard practice. If you're, if you're really about this corporate life, you're documenting everything. You're getting everything in writing. Don't, don't rely on what the supervisor says if the supervisor promises you anything verbally. Get it documented be an email, follow up with an email and confirm. Don't, don't, don't get caught lacking. Don't fall asleep. Always, always be documenting. Don't, uh, don't rely too much on, on just Verbal instruction on just the spoken word. Um, get that shit in writing. That way you have evidence. <clears throat> that way you can demonstrate. You can prove to anybody who wants to hold you accountable for what somebody else said. Right? If you get incorrect instruction, well, that's because you were instructed incorrectly. Not because you did the job wrong. But uh, that's going to be – that's incumbent on, on this employee, whether or not they're, they're capable of doing that, whether or not they have that mindset and can follow through with it. 
because um, I, I feel like th- them being hung up on how other on how their colleagues are feeling, whether or not their colleague their colleagues are including them, I think they've got their priorities mixed up, and uh, it's not going to be it's not going to go very well for them in the long run if their focus at work is other people and not their own job. Their central focus should be to do their job right and then from there network and build out. But in doing your job right, you have to be productive. You have to deliver and document. Document everything because at the end of the day, you're covering your own ass as much as you're learning. As much as you are there to acquire the knowledge, you're there to record it. You're there to uh, to record it as it's given to you. So, find out what it is that's required of you in order to do a good job. Not so much to be included. Because integration is going to come with recognition. They recognize you do your job right. They recognize you're competent, you're capable with your job. You will be included. You will be integrated seamlessly. That's going to come with a little bit of time, with a little bit of work. It's not going to be something that's automatic. I haven't seen it unless... You're so charismatic, unless you're so charismatic, unless you're so charming that on the first day, they, on the first day, they, uh, I don't know, they, they throw a party for you of some kind. But for that, you already have to have a reputation of sorts. So focus on cultivating that reputation in that organization first. And that's to do your job, to do it right, and follow up with anybody that you need to report to about that job. If you don't even have to report to your supervisor about this one project the director gave you, what are you talking to your supervisor for? Talk to the director. Maybe the director kept the supervisor out of the loop for a reason. This might be a test on the director's part, whether or not they can keep the supervisor around or whether they can keep you around. Regardless, you don't have to go down those rabbit holes. You don't have to go down those hypotheticals if you just focus on doing your job right. See what I'm saying? So what the director asks of you, you do. Obviously, don't sell out. Don't compromise your morals. Because you're going to remain accountable for what you do, whether you like it or not. So you ought to like, and you ought to respect what you're doing. But that's another episode. Let's take a look at one more comment real quick. We'll probably wrap this up pretty soon here because this is pretty straightforward here. Keep looking for a job. Follow up with the director about your work, about your project. Ask if the supervisor has been read into it. If the supervisor's on the fold about your project, then talk to the supervisor. But about work only, I don't know about going out to breaks and lunches with them. Like you have to tag along. I mean, that might be doing a bit much to try and quote unquote fit in. You don't necessarily have to do all that. And um, somebody else, okay, so somebody else comments here. I say this with genuine concern. Your post history shows this is a pattern for you. And it seems like therapy is the the best next step in working on your anxiety. (laughs) Well. Okay, well, yeah, I'm familiar. I'm aware that you can, I guess, look at posts and and comment history for users on this platform, on on this app, Reddit. 
And apparently somebody has done that much more due diligence, which I do every now and then if I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. But Redditors in, in general, at anybody really, isn't a very interesting person if they're commenting across many subjects, many topics. Maybe, maybe if, I don't know, if I was doing machine learning and scraping all of Reddit, that, that, might, that might help me somehow, right? But just as a person, I'm answering professional questions, professional development questions, which is uh, what this original post is about. But apparently he might, they, she, he, she, or they, don't give a fuck. This person might suffer from anxiety. And so they're thinking something is taking place when it might not actually be reality, right? They have the anxiety like these people don't like me. They're not inviting me. I'm not being included, right? All of that bullshit is an internal problem. So again, and that's fixed by focusing on your work, not worrying about what other people are doing. They will come to you later with time as you grow in recognition, as your, reputa- as your reputation develops. But that comes with you putting in the work to be known, you putting in the work to, to be wanted, to be around. It's not automatic. The first day you come in, this shit ain't that they ain't handing out participation trophies at the front door. I mean, maybe if you're working for some really soft company, but uh, for the most part in corporate, you, you you have to you have to make your bones. You have to earn your stripes in order to to be elevated socially. So, don't get it twisted. Don't get caught up. Definitely. Don't feel anxious. I mean, anxiety is a normal thing to an extent, but you get caught in a thought loop. You get caught thinking and thinking and and, and your wheels are spinning. That hamster wheel is turning and burning. Your gears are grinding inside over some petty bullshit, over stuff that doesn't even help you do your job, that doesn't help you be productive. Not immediately, at least. Not immediately. With time, you can network after being after establishing yourself there for a bit. You can network and become even more productive through networking. But as soon as you get there, fam, get the bag. Don't fumble the fucking check. Don't fuck the money up. Do your work. Get the check. Get your money. And do it moving. Keep it moving. But... I guess if you have something that's like a clinical form of anxiety or depression or whatever the fuck you're suffering from, uh, it, my, my advice, my opinion may not help you much. If, if it's an internal problem that you can't regulate yourself, right? Just gotta, just gotta regulate yourself. But if you're incapable of doing that, if you rely on what other people say and think and feel about you in order to value and appreciate yourself being included and being integrated. Like if you're like, if you're not included and integrated, if you're not invited to lunch and, and, and if you're not invited to break, uh, what they don't, they don't like you. They don't love you. They don't, they don't fucking have to, you don't need to be friends. You're just associates. That's it. You're just associates. You walk in, you say hi, maybe shake hands, but then you work. You get to work. That's how you build a reputation. That's how you bond with time. And that's probably what this group of individuals has over this poster, over this this person, this employee, because this employee is brand new. They are an outsider and they, they they are trying to integrate. They are trying to infiltrate. That's why I say when business is war, you're trying to infiltrate a company. You're necessarily a spy from the outside. Maybe not working for somebody else because 
then we're taught, then we are talking legit corporate espionage. That's another episode. But you're essentially trying to infiltrate a company to establish yourself as a corporate cowboy, to establish yourself as a professional within that organization. So don't be, uh, don't be taken. Don't be taken by somebody else's opinion, somebody else's action towards you, at least, at least not immediately. Don't fucking worry about them. Worry about yourself. Worry about what you are doing. Get your job done. Do it right. If you need help, then you reach out to the supervisor. Then you reach out to the director. I mean, the director assigned you this task. And if the director CC'd your supervisor as the person to go to in the chain of command, then go to the supervisor. If not, go to the director. What the fuck you got the supervisor? Why are you including the supervisor? Why are you integrating the supervisor into this project when they may not even have been read in? When they may not be on this project? I don't know. Well, I mean, I do know. But you need more help, folks. You need help. You know an associate that needs help. Some of this advice might be free. You could visit us on the page. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. You could send us a, a little donation, shoot us a buck, ask a question. It might show up on the podcast. Snail mail is always appreciated. Give us a little time to write back, obviously. P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. I'm going to wish you all a great week. Talk to you next time.